Before packing your belongings and moving to the old line state, it's important to realize there's more to Maryland than just awesome crab cakes. Maryland has a long, rich history. The first settlers arrived in 1634, and it was the temporary capital of the Continental Congress, and the birthplace of the Star-Spangled Banner. Union and Confederate armies fought each other at Antietam Creek during our nation's single bloodiest day in history. The Chesapeake Bay was important to early trade in America. It was a major blockade point for British ships in the Revolutionary War. These days, ports on the bay handle 10,000 seagoing ships a year, carrying over 2 billion pounds of cargo. Indeed, much of what it means to be a Marylander revolves around the state's special relationship to water. There's more than 50 rivers here, and countless streams, lakes, and ponds. But its crown jewel is the Chesapeake, providing Marylanders with a sense of local identity and pride. During the warmer seasons, the bay is home to work boats catching blue crabs. There's jet skiers everywhere, and weekend sailors chasing the breeze. In the fall, skipjack crews dot the bay in pursuit of oysters. This group is the last sail-powered fishing fleet in the United States. The Chesapeake Bay Retriever is a tough dog, bred for swimming in the bay's icy waters to retrieve waterfowl. But the cultural quirkiness doesn't end at the water. The state's official sport is jousting. From the wild ponies of Assateague Island, to the running of the Preakness, to the annual hosting of the biggest steeplechases, Maryland's special love of horses exists at all levels of their society. Maryland is the country's 42nd largest state, but what it lacks in size, it more than makes up for in the number of people. Over 6 million people live here, ranking it the 19th in overall population, and there are 584 people per square mile, which begs the question, why do so many people live so tightly packed together? The answer is easy, it's the economy. Maryland's economy is the 15th largest in the United States, with a GDP of $428 billion. At the end of 2019, its unemployment rate was 3.6%. Maryland's diverse economy is the second highest employer of technical workers in the country. More than 37% of the state's 25 and older population have a bachelor's degree. But when you lift the hood to look at the shape of this mighty economic engine, you'll see that the state's proximity to the nation's capital gives it a huge advantage over other states. It has a bigger percentage of federal workers than any of them, and it's home to more than 60 federal agencies. All U.S. defense companies are headquartered or have offices in Maryland. The U.S. military injects $18 billion a year into the economy, and non-defense procurement tops $12.3 billion a year, supporting more than 200,000 private sector jobs. Traditionally, agriculture and fishing are the roots of Maryland's economy, but the state is aggressively growing its advanced technology industries. More than 2,100 biotech firms make Maryland the country's fourth highest employer in that sector. And being home to the world-famous Human Genome Project, this rank is richly deserved. Employing more than 56,000 people, biotechnology is expected to create more than 10,000 new jobs over the next few years. IT and cybersecurity are obvious draws to the state. The U.S. Cyber Command and the National Security Agency are both headquartered here. Maryland has the fifth highest concentration of IT workers accounting for 80 out of every 1,000 private sector workers. Aerospace and defense is a thriving industry, leading the way in satellite technology, research and design, and the manufacturing of robotics, and unmanned aerial vehicles. All this tech is driven by the U.S. government's defense needs in the area of biodefense, avionics, weapons, and ordnance testing. The sector generates nearly $40 billion a year in economic activity. And yet, in a world where it seems like everything we buy comes from overseas, it's interesting to note that Maryland is a hotbed of manufacturing, chief and foremost Baltimore's famous shipyards. Feeding them and other industries are more than 4,000 manufacturing companies, many of them involved in steel fabrication. A third of these are in the Baltimore area. Manufacturing accounts for 4% of the state's workforce, and 60% of all such jobs are advanced, employing cutting-edge technology. Tourism is a large and vigorous part of Maryland's economic muscle, employing more than 140,000 people and showcasing the beauty and richness of the state. There's fishing charters, Fort McHenry, the three-mile boardwalk of Ocean City, pub crawls in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, sailing on the Chesapeake, fossil hunting at Calvert Cliff State Park, horse races, 18 scenic byways, history and art museums, fine arts, the Brookside Gardens, the National Aquarium, the William Brish Planetarium, and the Salisbury Zoo. These are but a handful of fun, interesting things to do in Maryland, and they don't even scratch the surface. Maryland is divided into five distinct regions, Western, Capital, Central, Southern, and Eastern Shore. The Panhandle, known as the Western region, is primarily rural, mountainous, and gorgeous. 
In addition to out-of-state tourists, many flock to this area on the weekends to escape the summer heat or to go skiing in the winter. With West Virginia to the west, the Potomac River to the south, and separated from Pennsylvania to the north by the famous Mason-Dixon Line, this region is well isolated from the rest of Maryland. Culturally, the people here are more Appalachian in outlook. They possess strong family loyalty, a deep connection to the land, love of God, and fierce independence. Summers here are 10 degrees cooler and winters harsher. Median home values here are just over $164,000, and median income is just below $50,000. In Cumberland and Hagerstown, crime is somewhat higher than in other parts of Maryland, and the poverty rate for the region as a whole is 13.3%. Now let's talk about the capital region, also called the Washington, D.C. metro area. It has a population of 2,219,874 spread across three counties. This region regularly hits the various top 10 places to live lists due to its hot jobs market and the closeness to the nation's capital. There are literally tons of things to do here. The National Cherry Blossom Festival, Broadway plays at the Kennedy Center, the National Art Gallery, day hiking in the Shenandoah Mountains, Visit over 200 monuments scattered all over DC, especially on the National Mall. Catch a double header at Nationals Park. Visit the world famous Smithsonian's 17 museums, 13 gardens, and of course the National Zoo. A little about the counties. Montgomery County Schools ranked number two in the state, second only to Howard County. Eight communities in Montgomery County were listed in the top 10 places to live in Maryland by Money Magazine. Prince George's County holds some of the richest African American majority counties in the nation. In fact, five neighborhoods, Fort Washington, Friendly, Kettering, Mitchellville, and Woodmore are the top 10 wealthiest black communities in the country. Frederick County, located in northern Maryland, borders Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Virginia just across the Potomac River. It's home to Catoctin Mountain Park, where you'll find the presidential retreat, Camp David. The county still has significant farmland and is the state's largest dairy producer, generating one-third of the state's milk production. As for jobs, well, as already stated, the federal government is a massive employer in Maryland, and in this area in particular. Here's a list of the top employers in the capital region. Kind of amazing, wouldn't you say? But all this prosperity comes at a cost. To live a, quote, modest yet adequate standard of living, residents with a family of four need an annual salary of more than $123,975. This according to the Economic Policy Institute. Here's a quick look at the cost of living for these three counties as compared to the national average. Pretty expensive. But the drawbacks don't end there. The capital region has the second worst traffic in the nation. Only New York City's is worse. A typical one-way commute takes an average of 36 minutes, on a good day. That said, there are other commuting options besides your car. The train, the subway, buses, and ride-sharing. Many employers subsidize most if not all the cost of public transportation options. Another thing to consider when moving to this part of Maryland is what I call the DC mindset. In this job-centric place, you won't necessarily get to know your neighbors, as in at all, even if you try. Everyone's from somewhere else or going somewhere else, and they're doing it as fast as possible. Unless they belong to a church, people tend to make friends through their jobs. The intense nature of employment here makes happy hours a big part of the culture. When you do make friends, visiting and doing things together can be a chore, given the terrible traffic and urban sprawl. Meetup groups are a mixed bag. They're often just happy hours with people you don't work with. I'll wrap up the capital region with a quick bit about home values. The average median home value here is $374,967. Montgomery County homes are the highest, coming in at just under $500,000. And if you decide to rent, well, a one-bedroom apartment in this region goes for roughly $1,500 a month. Central Maryland has a population of 2,710,489. Anchored by Baltimore, Maryland's largest city, this region offers waterfront villages and mill towns, beautiful farmlands, the rolling hills of horse country, professional sports teams, the waters and the beaches of the Chesapeake Bay, and Annapolis, the oldest state capital in the nation. Though the DC metropolitan area is certainly rich, the crown of all Maryland's jewels is Howard County, ranked the third wealthiest county in the country. Howard also has the state's best school district. Niche.com awarded the district an A+. It's the only A+, it gave in all the state's 25 school districts. The county has a student-to-teacher ratio of 13 to 1. 
59% of the students are proficient in math, and 55% in reading. Six cities in Central Maryland made the list of the 20 best places to live. I'll mention just three of them. Annapolis is a really cool place if you enjoy history, sailing, and a cosmopolitan flair. An hour west of Washington, D.C., and an hour south of Baltimore, this maritime city has a bustling downtown with loads of restaurants and shops. Its gorgeous waterfront is peppered with marinas, sailboats, yachts, and great waterside pubs. Over 350 years old, it actually served as America's temporary capital from 1783 to 1874. Downtown Annapolis is a living museum. Here you'll find lovingly preserved 18th and 19th century buildings and over five blocks of cobblestone streets. Next up is Mount Airy, ranked 11th in the state and one of the smallest towns on the list. It's an hour north of DC and 40 miles west of Baltimore. The residents who live here love it. Its location gives them that small town feel while still having easy access to the urban areas that they needed. You'll find historic buildings in the town and beautiful farmland outside of it. Mount Airy is big on creating an environment where residents can stay active. It has 10 parks where you can go for a stroll, train for a 5K, catch some fish, or play some leisurely tennis. And of course, you can meet up with friends at one of the many restaurants and pubs. The school district is very good and received an overall grade of A. 60% of the students are at least proficient in math and 52% in reading, well above the state's average. The Mount Airy crime rate is 63% lower than the US average. Your chance of being a victim is one in 107. Not only that, but the year-over-year -year crime rate has dropped more than 55%. While Mount Airy is a small town, its cost of living is pretty steep. The median home value is $361,500, while the median household income is $112,955. This makes it 35% more expensive to live in Mount Airy than the national average. To live in Mount Airy means you need to commute for a good salary. The average one-way commute time is nearly 41 minutes. Money Magazine loves Ellicott City. It's repeatedly listed in their top 10 places to live in the United States. You'll find great restaurants on Main Street, charming taverns, and delicious craft ales at the local brewery. Ellicott City is close to Annapolis, Baltimore, and DC, so residents have a lot of options when it comes to where they can go for work and play. Residents typically commute 30 minutes each way when going to work. The median household income is $124,059, one of the highest in the state, and that high income is needed. Ellicott City's median home value is $522,700, and the median rental is around $1,600 a month. We leave the central region and head to southern Maryland. Here we find the southernmost counties on the western shore of the Chesapeake Bay. Nearly three-fourths of the area is still rural, and home to the Amish and Mennonite communities. It's an ideal place if you love nature, fishing, beaches, kayaking pristine waterways, wineries, crab cakes and oysters, cozy cottages, and a more traditional lifestyle. People are starting to move to Southern Maryland from metro areas in search of a quieter lifestyle and a lower cost of living. Two small towns experiencing this exodus also made various best places to live lists. La Plata is a mainly white collar residential area. Many residents commute to nearby Washington DC or Baltimore for work. As a result, the town is experiencing an economic boom. The median household income is $92,738 and the median property value is $336,700. The typical commute time is 31 minutes. Chesapeake Beach is a small town with a young population. It's friendly, expensive, and loaded with marinas, charter fishing, restaurants, and bars. There's also a water park and a resort spa hotel. The city is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The median income is $102,679, and the median property value is $313,600. Finally, we come to the eastern shore of Maryland. Lying in the Atlantic coastal plain, this region is made up of nine counties, seven of which have Chesapeake Bay coastlines. Only one of the nine counties, Worcester, borders the Atlantic Ocean. Largely rural, the eastern shore has three primary industries, fishing along the coasts, farming, which includes large-scale chicken farms, and tourism, which tends to be centered around the Atlantic Coast Resort of Ocean City. The area is loaded with historic and natural landmarks on bike trails or quiet country roads. If you hate quiet country roads, you can explore many of the rivers, creeks, inlets, and bays by boat. The fresh fish, crabs, and oysters found here are something residents and visitors look forward to all year. Probably the coolest thing you'll find are the famed wild ponies of Assateague, which wander freely on the beaches of Assateague Island National Seashore. Lovely as all this is, it should be noted that none of the cities and towns on the eastern shore made the list of best places to live in Maryland. 
The eastern shore, like the western region, has a lot of poverty, and some of the large towns here are ridden by crime. I hope you learned something about Maryland that'll help you in your planning. With luck, you can make an informed decision when you go to buy, rent, or simply come visiting. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And until next time, I'll see you. Bye for now.